Hey everyone, welcome to the beginning of unit three. We're gonna be covering a lot of different things in this unit, but it's all gonna revolve around the idea of factoring. So we've gotta understand what factoring is. It's, it's something that you've kind of done in the past. We, you've talked about greatest common factors, probably in middle school, but we're gonna spend today reviewing a little bit of that before we get into the more math two related things. They are related. The greatest common factor and factoring in math two are directly related. So this is stuff that you need to know. It's not just a review. It's stuff that you will uh, be expected to know. Okay. So with that said, our objective for today is to be able to find the greatest common factor and be able to take that greatest common factor from a polynomial expression. Okay. So first things first, uh, let's take a look at kind of an interesting thought. Using the information in this diagram, uh, express the area of the larger rectangle in two different ways. So here we have um, a rectangle that is broken up into two pieces, right? So you have a, a small rectangle, another smallish rectangle, and then we have the big rectangle. Well, how could I find the area of that? Remember, the area is the amount of space inside the object. Well, one person might say, just find the area of each little rectangle and then add them up. So remember, to find the area of a rectangle, you take the length and multiply it by the width or the base times the height. So in this case, we would say C times 10, or we could say 10C, right? So the first rectangle would have an area of 10C. And then the second rectangle has a base of P and a height of 10 again. So the area of this guy would be P times 10 or 10 P. And then we go ahead and add those together to find the area of this whole figure. Okay. Another method somebody might say is, well, I can just think of the entire rectangle as an entire rectangle instead of breaking it into pieces. So I can just say the base of the whole thing times the height of the whole thing. Well, how do I figure out the base? The base is C plus P. We're adding them together, right? If this distance from here to here is three, and this distance from here to here is five, then the whole length is gonna be three plus five or eight. In this case, it's C plus P. So we have C plus P, and then multiply that, whatever you get there, times the 10. Or we could write it like this. We could say 10 times C plus P. Now, both of these will produce the same value, the same area. But what I want you to recognize, what I want you to understand is that because they produce the same area, you should be able to manipulate each one of these to be equivalent to each other. So what could you do? Well, you could take method two and you could distribute the 10 into the parentheses. We would get 10C plus 10P. And that's exactly what method one is. Okay. That is one way of looking at it. If I start at method two and I get to method and then go to method one. Well, the idea of taking out a greatest common factor or factoring in general is the idea of going the other way. How do we make method one look like method two? Well, we're going to explore this today, but ultimately you can see that both of these terms have what's called a common factor of 10. They both have a 10 in it. So if we take the 10 out, we're left with C plus P. And so we can kind of see it that way. We're going to go more in depth with that today though. Okay. So again, if you distribute the second method, you'll end up with the first method. If you factor the first method, you'll end up with the second method. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and remember some of this stuff about factoring or sorry, uh, finding the greatest common factor. Actually, I guess before we do that, let's go ahead and simplify this. We've got 5 times 3a, I'm going to go ahead and write this down here, which I don't think we need this per se, but somebody might, so that's okay. We're going to say uh, for number 1, uh, 5 times 3a minus 4. And my camera is extremely blurry. There we go. Okay, so we want to simplify this. So to simplify this, we look to combine any like terms within the parentheses, and we can't because remember, um, the 3a is a different term than the 4. This has an a in it, this doesn't. So the best way to simplify this is to distribute. 5 times 3a 
is 15a. And then 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. And so that is our simplified form for number 1. Pretty, pretty basic, pretty simple. You guys have done this before. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 2. Number 2 takes a little bit step further. Um, but you should still be able to do this, I believe. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this. We could combine like terms first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to combine the things that are inside that are alike. 2x plus 3x is 5x, and then minus 7. Okay? Then we'll go ahead and distribute. Okay? So before I go ahead and distribute, I want to make sure that we understand what an exponent means. So when I say x squared, what does that mean? That means x times x. Right? A, a number squared means x times x. Well, same thing here. If I say x to the third, that means x times x times x. We're multiplying x three times. Okay. So now when I go to multiply these things, I'm going to go ahead and write it out, but um, we're going to be looking for something here. If I distribute this, 6x squared times 5x, I'm just going to write it down. 6x squared times 5x. And then multiply here we've got minus 6x squared times 7. Now, multiplication is called, it, it's referred to as something that's commutative, which means you can multiply in any order that you want. If I said 3 times 2 times 4, that's going to give me the same answer as if I said 4 times 3 times 2, because multiplication is commutative. 3 times 2 is 6, times 4 is 24. 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24. You can multiply in any order you want, you'll get the same answer. So here I've got a bunch of multiplication. 6 times x squared times 5 times x. So I can rewrite, rewrite this as 6 times 5 times x squared times x. Okay, And then the 6 times 5 we can simplify to be 30. What about the x squared times the x? Well, that is x times x times x, because we have an x squared, so that's x times x, and then times the x here. So ultimately, we could say that we have 30, and then we have x to the third power. Okay, This is going to be important in terms of identifying factors here in a second. In the second piece, we could rearrange that, so we could say 6 times 7 times x squared, and so we end up with 42 x squared. We could write that out as x times x, but ultimately it's x squared. Okay, so this is the simplified form of number two. What did we do here? We simplified, we simplified these two expressions. We put them in standard form. To simplify means to put it in standard form. Okay, so 15a minus 20 and 30x cubed. Whoa, where am I? I am off here. Oh, that is correct. Okay, so... Um, and then we can combine like terms there. Oh, I guess I didn't do that in this problem. Because this is x cubed and x cubed, I can combine that to say 12, I have 12 x cubes plus 18 x cubes, which is 30 x cubes. They're like terms. And that's exactly what I got here in my notes. Okay. Um, and again, practice and remember that should be probably on the left hand side of your notes. But this, the greatest common factor, should be on the right hand side of your notes. The greatest common factor, now this definition is kind of weird, it's, it's kind of wonky. Um, but we, we simplify this, we create an acronym. The greatest common factor is the GCF. The greatest common factor is the GCF. The definition is the largest product of numbers and variables that can be evenly divided from all terms present. You go, what the heck does that mean? The largest product of numbers and variables that can be evenly divided from all terms present. Well, here's the idea. It's actually taking, in a sense, it's taking our um, simplified form, the 15a minus 20, and factoring it. The GCF out of 15a and 20 is 5. We're, go we're basically just going backwards. Okay, Here, the GCF out of all three of these terms is going to be 6x squared. It's the largest product. Product means multiplication. We're multiplying these things. The largest product of numbers and variables, so 6 and x are number and variable, that can be evenly divided from all terms present. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. Again, this should be on the right-hand side of your notes. Okay, What is the GCF of 75 and 105? Again, this is something that you've done in the past, but you might need a, a little bit of help with this. 75 and 105. Okay. Now, I'm going to do something called the cake method because what we end up with is something that looks like a cake. It's just a nice way to remember um, the routine of how to do this. We are looking to factor uh, 75, okay? So if I take 75 and I go to factor it, well, what, what can I divide out of 75? Well, I know how to divide by 2. If a number is even, it's divisible by 2. How do I know if a number is divisible by 3? Well, here's a trick. If you take the digits of any number, and you add those digits up. So if I add up 7 plus 5, I'll do it off to the side here. If I add up 7 plus 5, 7 plus 5, I get 12. Is 12 divisible by 3? Yes, it is. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So since this is divisible by 3, that means 75 will also be divisible by 3. And I could have thought about, I, I could have uh, thought it this way. If I divide, if I'm thinking about quarters here, if I think about money, 75 cents, well, what is that? 75 cents is three quarters. So I draw a little L here, and I put a three there, okay? I factor out a prime factor, prime factorization. When I divide 75 by three, I end up with 25, okay? Then I want to keep going. Three can't really be factored anymore, but 25 can. What can I divide out of 25? Well, I can divide a 5 out of 25, and the result is 5, right? 5 times 5 is 25, or 25 divided by 5 is 5. Well, is there anything that I could divide out of 5? Sure. I can divide 5 out of 5. So what is 5 divided by 5? It's 1, okay? So this is the cake method, because if you take your paper and you turn it around, it looks kind of like a stacked cake with a candle on top, okay? But that's one method to factor. The bottom line here is, uh, aside from the one, the one is always going to be a prime factor of any number. The three main factors of 75 are 3, 5, and 5. 3 times 5 times 5 is 75, and you can use your calculator to check that out, okay? Now I'm going to factor a different way just so you can see a different way of doing this and maybe a way that you might be more familiar with. I do a factor tree. Well, what can I divide out of 75? Up here, I divide it by 3. So let's go ahead and do that here. 3 times 25. And then 3 is prime, so I'm not going to factor that any further. So 25 factors to 5 times 5. And 5 is prime, and, five, and the other 5 is prime. So these are my uh, prime factors. So what I do is I circle the, brand, the end of each branch. So here, this is the end of the branch. Here is the end of a branch. Here is the end of a branch. So these are my prime factors, 3, 5, and 5. And that's exactly what we got uh, here, 3, 5, and 5. So those are two different ways of factoring. You can use the factor tree or you can use the cake method, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at 105 and do the same thing. Well, what can I divide out of 105? I don't know, um, but I do know it ends in 5. So if it ends in 5, that means I can divide it by 5. Any number that ends in a 0, or a 5 is divisible by 5. So I'll put a 5 out here. How many times does 5 go into 105? We'd say 105 divided by 5. And you can use your calculator for that. You end up with 21. And then we go to divide that. Uh, what can I divide out of 21? Well, 21, 21 is 3 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21. And then what can I divide out of 7? Well, I can, 7 is prime. So that means I can only divide it by 7 or 1. So 7, the result is 1, and there's our upside-down birthday cake, okay? So our prime factors here, and I'll put them in least to, to greatest order, are 3, 5, and 7. 3, 5, and 7. If I do the factor tree method, okay, well, 105, uh, if I divide that by 5, I end up with 21. And then if I divide the 21, by 3, I end up with 7. And so you can see that I've got the same three factors here. Now, if you recognize that 105 is divisible by 3 before anything else, you could have put a 3 here 
and then you would have got a different number there. And that's okay as long as you're dividing correctly, okay? But here's the bottom line. If I want the GCF, I want the greatest common factor. Common means alike. Out of these two numbers, out of these two numbers, 75 and 105, we have a common factor of three. They both have three in it. And another common factor of five, okay? Now this five, does not go with anything else over here, and this seven doesn't go with anything over here. So these are not common factors. They are factors that are independent of each problem, but the three and the five are common factors. So the greatest common factor, the GCF, is gonna be three times five, or we would say 15, okay? 15 is our GCF for 75 and 105. I know I spent a lot of time on that, but this is an important problem in helping us determine um, common factors and, and taking out greatest common factors of polynomials when we get to that, okay? So here you can see in my lesson, I did the, the factor tree method. And if you notice, well, actually, uh, I factored it exactly the same way, but uh, that's okay there. All right, for B, uh, for, for B, it's a little bit different because what do we see? Well, we see that B, has some variables in it. It's got 14a squared, and it's got 35a to the fourth. So let's go ahead and do our factor. Uh, I'll go ahead and do the cake method for the first one. If I take 14 and I go to divide that, well, what's that divisible by? Because it's even, I can divide it by two, and that would give me seven. Two, uh, 14 divided by two is seven. And then I'll divide seven by seven because it's prime, and I'm left with one. So my factors are two times seven. Now, what about the a's? Remember back um, up here, we broke down the idea of an exponent. x cubed means x times x times x. Well, that implies that a squared is gonna be a times a, okay? Let's go ahead and do the 35. Uh, I'll do the, th uh, the factor tree method here. 35, what can I divide out of 35? Well, I can divide it by five. So five times seven is 35. And because five and seven are both prime, I'm done factoring. So I'll carry those down, five times seven. And now we wanna deal with the exponents or the, the variables. So we have a to the fourth. So that's gonna be a times a times a times a, okay? Now we'll circle our common factors. The two, there's no other two here. There's a seven in both of them. What about the variables? Well, there's an A here that matches with this A, and then there's this A, the second A, that matches with that one, okay? So what do we see? We see our GCF, our GCF is seven, because they both have a seven, A, they have one A, and they have a second A. So that would be, uh, we would simplify that to say seven A squared, that is our GCF, okay? Um, Let's see, make sure we did that right before we move on. Uh, the 14a squared factor is the two times seven times a times a. I kind of skipped the factoring tree there. And then the five times seven times a times a times a times a. Um, you, you don't have to necessarily do the cake method or the factor tree if you can factor uh, correctly according to, to this, that's fine. Um, but, uh, it's beneficial to do one of these methods because that makes sure that you're factoring it correctly, okay? So we can see that our GCF is gonna be 7a squared there, okay? Let's go ahead and go on to looking at, uh, go ahead and put this in your notes. This is gonna be very important here. How do you take a GCF? Well, there's a few steps here and I just kinda wanna summarize it according to what we did here. Step one is to factor each term down to its primes. What does that mean? Well, here we took the 14 a squared and we factored it out to its primes. Its primes were two, seven, a, and a. The prime factors of 35a to the fourth are five, seven, a, 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 a. Okay, so we, we factored it down to its primes. Step two, circle all the common factors. So we circled the seven and the a and the a in each one because those are the ones that they have in common. And then in step three, we multiply those common factors uh, that are circled. And when we do that, we end up with our GCF. Okay, so that's how you find a GCF. So let's go ahead and go through some 
uh, another example here to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, here we have, again, this should be on the right-hand side because it's an example. Here we have 42 x to the seventh, and notice we have three things that we have to do here. We have 28 x to the fifth, and we have 98 x to the eighth. So now we're getting some big numbers here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, the uh, cake method here just for the 42. Well, the 42, I can divide it by 2 because it's even, so that'd be 21 left over. And then the 21 is divisible by, maybe I don't know, it's, it can't be divisible by 2, it might be divisible by 3. So I will um, divide that, divide that by 3 if I can add those digits. 2 plus 1 is 3, and 3 is divisible by 3. So I can divide 21 by 3, and I'm left with 7. And then 7 is prime, so I can only divide it by 7, which gives me 1. So my prime factors for 42 are 2, 3, and 7. And then the x to the 7th, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? So that is for the first one. Let's go ahead and do the second one here. 28. I can divide that by 2. I'm left with 14. I can divide that by 2 again. I'm left with 7. And I can divide that by 7. And I'm left with 1. So my prime factors there are 2, 2, 7, x, 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 and x, five x's, okay? And then it looks like I'm going to run out of some room here, but that's okay. 98, well, that can be divisible by 2, and I'm left with 49. 49 is divisible by 7 because 7 times 7 is 49, and then 7 is divisible by 7, so we're left with 1. The prime factors there are going to be 2, 7, 7, and then we have 8 x's that we have to write out here. Now, the goal is not to be able to write out all these x's. We're looking for a shorter way of doing this. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, so here I've got all my prime factors of each of these three things. The next thing I need to do is circle the common ones. So we're going to, let's see, they all have a 2 in it. They have one 2 in it. Uh, they don't all have a 3. They do all have a 7. Okay. Um, they don't have another 2 or another 7. What do we see here? Well, we see a bunch of x's. So how many x's do they have in common? This one has 7, this one has 5, and this one has 8. Well, I can't take 8 of them because that would be too many. I can't take 7 of them, that would be too many. I can take 5 here. Could I take 5 here? Yeah, I could. Could I take 5 there? Yeah, I could. So I could take 5 of the x's five of the x's and five of the x's. And so you can see that there's nothing left um, in this group here of x's, so I can't take another x out of that, which means it doesn't go with um, anything else, even though there's extra x's here. We're looking for the GCF of all three. So my GCF is going to be two times seven, two times seven, times x times x times x times x times x. And that simplifies to 14 x to the fifth. And that is our GCF there. Oops. Okay. Now, with that said, one thing I want you to notice and, um, is how to figure out that exponent pretty quickly. Now, I'm going to give you some practice problems here that I want you to do, and after you're done with these practice problems, maybe we can start seeing patterns here. Okay. So with that said, here are three practice problems that I want you to try. Do this in the left-hand side of your notes. Um, and then come back, push pause, do this on your own, and then when you're done, come back and push play and see how you did, okay? For number three, we've got 80 x to the fifth and 100 x to the third. Well, factoring 80, this can get long here. Uh, that'd be a two. Uh, 40, we can factor out another two. Uh, 20, we can factor out a two. Left with 10, factor out a two. Left with 5, factor out of 5, we're left with 1. So we end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, and then we have 5 x's there. Okay, so that's our prime factors there. For 100, we can factor out a 2, left with 50. We can factor out a 2 again, we're left with 25. Factor out, well, what can I divide by 25? That would be 5 times 5, 
and then five is divisible by five, and you're left with one. So our prime factors there are two, two, five, five, and then our x's, we have x, x, and x. Okay. Our GCFs then are, let's see, we have a two here. We have another two that they have in common. We have a five that they have in common. No other numeric values. We have an x and an x, another x and another x, and a third x and a third x, and that's all we have. So then when I go to put these together, I got 2 times 2 times 5, 2 times 2 times 5, times x times x times x. And we're left with 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20, and x to the third. So our GCF is 20, x to the third. All right? Hopefully you're seeing a pattern here, right? Hopefully. For number 4, let's go ahead and look at number 4 here. Number 4, we have 12r, and we have 30 r to the sixth. Well, what can I divide out of 12? I can divide a two, we're left with six. Divide a two again, we're left with three. Three's prime, so our factors are two times two times three, and then times just one r. For 30, divided by two, we got 15. Uh, that's divisible by three, so we're left with five. That's divisible by five, so one. So our factors are three, uh, sorry, two times three times five, times r, times r, times r, times r, times r, times r. All right. Circle our common factors. We got a 2, we got a 3, we have an r, and that is it. And so our, uh, our GCF is going to be 2 times 3 times r, which is 6r, right there. Okay. And for the last one, number 5, for this slide at least, because we have to go on to factoring polynomials, 60n to the 4th, 35n to the 7th, and 40n squared. Now hopefully you've seen something here. Hopefully you've recognized that when I look at each one of these, all these examples, the GCF has an exponent of 5 because the lowest exponent in all three choices was a 5. The lowest exponent. Here, the GCF on the second one, or on number three here, was a three, uh, x to the third, because the lowest exponent is x to the third, okay? And then on four, on four, our exponent here is technically a one, because the lowest exponent out of these two is a one, okay? So that should help us find the GCF a lot quicker than instead, instead of writing out all these x's. We still have to do that with the, with the numbers, though. So 60 is 2 times 30, 30 is 2 times 15, 15 is 3 times 5, and then you're left with 1. So the, the 60 is going to be 2 times 2 times 3 oops, times 5, and then we'll, we'll talk about the n to the 4th in a second. Oops. The 35, we can divide a 5 out of that, we're left with 7. Divide a 7 out of that, you're left with 1. So the factors there are 5 times 7, we'll deal with the n to the 7th in a second. 40 factors uh, to 2 and 20, 20 factors to 2 and 10, 10 factors to 2 and 5, and 5 factors of 5 and 1. So we're left with 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Now, dealing with the um, exponents here, well, we'll deal with exponents in a second. We've got a common factor, not of 2, They're, they don't all have 2s, they don't all have 3s, they do all have a 5 in them. So the GCF for the numeric value is 5, what about the variables? Well, based on what we just talked about, we look at the lowest exponent to find how many n's are in common. And so we end up with n squared. Okay, so that is my GCF, 5n squared. If you're having a hard time with that, then you would multiply this out. n times, this one would be n times n times n times n. This one would be n times n times n times n times n times n times n. And this one would be n times n. And then you circle and you would find out that in fact, you only have two ends that are in common. So that's a GCF on that one, okay? So those are some uh, good examples of greatest common factors in uh, the past that you guys have dealt with. Let's go ahead and go on to the next thing here because how are we gonna use this in our, oops, in our um, math two content? So here it says, what is the GCS, GCF, we already did this one. We already did that one. Yes? No. Wow, we didn't do this one, did we? Yeah, we did. Okay. So notice, what do you notice about the exponents on each, vari on each variable? The GCF, 
um, ha holds the smallest exponent. So you can see that each variable has the smallest exponent of all the terms. So the GCF of this guy is going to be x to the third. The GCF of this one's going to be just r to the first. The GCF of this one's going to be n to the second. All right. Let's now go ahead and go on to factoring a GCF out of a polynomial. So this is something that needs to be in the right-hand side of your notes. Okay, Factoring the GCF. Well, factoring is just undo undoing distribution like we talked about earlier on. You guys all know how to distribute into a set of parentheses. We are now going to take a standard form polynomial and factor out the GCF so it looks like we have something times a parenthesis, okay? So an example of this uh, it says factor the following polynomial. So again, this should be on the right-hand side. And we'll go ahead and do A together. Actually, all of these together. So looking at A, we have 6C squared minus 12C. Oops, 12C, that's a C there, plus 9. So we're looking for the GCFs. Well, we would factor each one of these to, down to their primes. So looking at the six prime factors, two and three. So the prime factors are two times three. And then we got the C squareds there. We'll deal with that in a second. For the 12, we got two and six. Six is two times three, and three is three times one. So our factors there are two times two times three. And then for the 9, that should be pretty easy. That's factored by 3 and 3, and then factor that out with 3 and 1. And so we factor of 3 times 3, and you don't need to put the 1. Um, so the GCF here is going to be just a singular 3. Okay, so our GCF for the numeric value is 3. And then we have to look at the, vari the, the variables with the exponents. Well, we see a C squared. We see a C and we don't see a C there. So we can't factor out a common factor of a C because there's no C in this guy. So three is our GCF. Now from here, we wanna figure out what's left over. If I write down, I'm gonna go ahead and write it down so you can see it. Um, if I write down all the factors, two times three times C times C, and then for the other one, it's two times two times three, and then times C, and the last one is three times three with no C, we can see that, um, again, we have the factors of three that are in common. And so our, our GCF is three. And then now we got to figure out what's left over that's going to go in this parenthesis. Well, what's left over is what we didn't circle. Here we have two and C times C. Well, that would be two C squared. And then here we have two times two, which is four and C. And then here we have left over a three. And then the signs that we have up here are basically going to carry down. So that's a negative. So we're going to put a negative here. That's a positive, so we're going to put a positive there. So this is the completely factored form of our standard form polynomial. Before, we were used to going from here to here. Now we're going backwards from here to there. Okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at B and see what we come up with. Here we have 8x cubed, and we have 16x squared, and 40 x, negative 40x. Well, let's go ahead and do our little factoring tree. 2 times 4, 2 times 2, 2 times 1. So for the 8x cubed, we have uh, 2 times 2 times 2. And then I'm going to write this out, um, x times x times x. 16 factors of 2 and 8, 2 and 4, 2 and 2, 2 and 1. So the GCF there, or the, the prime factors are 2, 2, 2, 2. And then we have an X and an X. For the 40, we'll ignore the negative for right now. 2 and 20, 2 and 10, 2 and 5, 5 and 1. And so you're left with 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, and then times X. Okay. Now, looking at our prime factors, will we have a 2 in common? We have another two in common. We have a third two in common. Uh, no fives in common. We have an X in common and no other X's. So our GCF here is going to be two times two times two, which is eight. And then we have one X. So that's our GCF. And now we need to figure out what's left over here. Well, um, 
what's left over that we didn't circle? Here we have x squared. x times x is x squared. Here we have a 2 that we didn't circle and an x, so we'd say 2x. And here we have a 5 left over, so we'll just say a 5. And then we've got a positive, positive, negative, so positive, positive, negative. So that is our factored form of our original polynomial. Okay. Now, uh, C looks a little bit different because you can see that there's multiple variables in C. We have negative 50, m to the fourth, n squared, minus 70, m, n to the fifth. All right, well, let's go ahead and factor these. Notice, um, notice both of them have a negative out front. That is a common factor. Since they're both negative, I can factor out a negative 1, and you'll see what that looks like in a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at the 50. That's going to be 2 times 25. 25 is 5 times 5, and 5 times 1. So we have 2 times 5 times 5 here. And then notice, this doesn't give me negative 50. It gives me positive 50. So I want to multiply that by negative 1 as well. That will give me the negative 50. For the 70... Well, that's 2 times 35. 35 is divisible by 5, so 5 times 7, and then 7 times 1. And so we're left with 2 times 5 times 7. <coughs> and then, again, that's a negative 70, so we want to factor out a negative 1 out front. And then I'm going to go ahead and carry these down underneath it. I've got 4 m's, m times m times m times m. And then we have 2 n's, n times n, for the first one. And then for the second one, we have just 1m and 5n's. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and circle the primes that are in common. We've got a negative 1 in both. We have a 2 in both. We have a 5 in both. And we have an m in both. No other m's. We have 2n's here and 2n's there. So again, you can see that the GCF on the m's is the lowest exponent. The GCF on the n's is n squared. It's the lowest exponent. <laughs> so we're left with uh, negative 1 times 2 times 5 is going to be negative 10. And then we have m and then n squared. And then what's left over in our parentheses? Well, what's left over up here? we got a 5 and we have m to the third. And then here we have a 7 and an n to the third. And then because we took out the negative 1, there's only a positive left over. And so that is our factored form of this polynomial here. Okay? All right. Let's compare those answers to what I got here and make sure we're right. And in fact, that one is correct. And that one is correct. And that one looks correct as well. So that's good. All right. One more slide to go. Oh, by the way, one last thing I want to note. Make sure, um, it's a good idea to distribute back in to make sure that you get what, you're supposed, get what you started with. So if I go back up to this example here, if I multiply 3 times 2c squared, I get 6c squared. 3 times negative 4c is negative 12c, and 3 times 3 is 9. So that works out pretty well. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and look at some practice problems. Put this on the left-hand side and factor each of these polynomials completely. Once you think you have it, come back and compare your answers to mine so that you know you are on the right track. We've got six problems here today. All right, for number six, for number six, we've got 36y minus 24. Well, 36 factors to two times two times three times three, and then we have the y there. 24 factors to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, 2, 4, 8, 24, yep. Uh, the GCFs here are going to be 2 and 2, 2 and 2, and that's, oh, and a 3 and a 3, and that's it. So 2 times 2 times 3, that's going to be 12. And we're left with, oh, this, this negative 24, we also have a factor of negative 1 that we want to put there. We're left with, in this one, 3y. And in this one, we're left with a negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. And so that is our factored form for number 6. For number 7, we have 15t squared plus 10t minus 5. 
Well, factoring out the 15, that's 3 times 5, and then times t times t. And then 10 is 2 times 5 times t. And then the 5 can factor to negative 1 times 5 because it's a negative. That's a good idea to deal with. Uh, what do they have in common? Well, they both, they, all three of them have a 5, but not much else. These have t's in common, but since that one doesn't, you can't factor it out. So you're left with 5. And then left over here is going to be 3t squared. Here it's going to be plus 2t. And here it's going to be minus 1. And that is our factored form there. Again, we could distribute to check our work. For number 8, we have 30, a to the 6th, minus 45, a to the 4th, plus 75, a cubed. Well, factors, um, I'm going to kind of skip over this one. The GCF of this guy is going to be 15, a to the 3rd. I knew a to the 3rd because that's the lowest exponent. This one's divisible by 15, so is that one, so is that one. So now we've got to figure out what's left over. Well, 15 times what gives us 30? That would be 2. Excuse me. And then uh, if I take 3a's factored out, I'm left with 3a's or a to the third inside because I need to make up uh, 6 a's altogether. Uh, 15 times negative 3 is negative 45, and since there's 3 a's being multiplied here, I need one more a to multiply for that one. And then for the 75, I would need, um, let's see, what times 15 gives you 75? Well, that would be 5. And then a to the third, there's no other a's left because we took all three out. And so this is our GCF, or our factored form for number 8. For number 9, we have 4x to the fifth plus 12x to the fourth, minus 8x cubed, minus 4x squared. Uh, the GCF out of all of these is going to be 4. And again, I'm not showing all the steps to this. I would expect you to show the steps like we did up here until you're absolutely comfortable with this. Um, the highest x, or sorry, the lowest exponent is x squared, so we'd say 4x squared. Left over here, if I divide 4 by 4, I get 1. If I, if I take x squared out of x to the fifth, I get x to the third. 12 divided by 4 is 3. If I take x squared out of x to the fourth, I get x squared. If I divide negative 8 by 4, I get negative 2. And then x squared out of x cubed is just x. And then negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. And the x squared taken out of x squared is no x is left over. And so that is our factored form. Again, we can distribute to double check our work. All right, we're getting close to the end here. Number 10, we've got 2b plus 2h. Well, these are actually all primes, so that's good. 2, the first one has a factor of 2 and b. The second one has a factor of 2 and h. They have a 2 in common and nothing else, so we're left with a b plus a h on the inside. Okay, That's actually the equation for perimeter of a rectangle. And then number 11, I got a funky symbol there, pi, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Well, we notice that they both have a 2 in there, and they both have a pi in there, and the lowest exponent on the r is a 1, so I could write this out as r times r, but you can recognize that that only has 1. So our GCF is 2 pi r, and then left over here, if I take an r out of that, I'm left with an r, and then if I take an r out of that, I'm left with no r's left, and I just have an h, so r plus h. So that is our factored form. I'll take one of these R's out, essentially, of that. And by the way, this is a surface area of a cylinder uh, just by a, the side. All right, so that wraps up our lesson in common factors, greatest common factors, and then how to factor out of polynomials. If you have any questions, please comment below or find me in tutoring and ask me for help. But uh, with that said, have a great night. Make sure you get your uh, assignment done, and I'll see you next time.